All right, moving on to regression. So as I mentioned on the bit about correlation, regression feeds on correlations and essentially puts them into a more complex model that gives you more um, ability to make certain inferences. The nice thing about regression is while some people are often intimidated by it, it's really not that hard to understand the basic underlying concepts. And if you can understand the very most basic kinds of regression, it's then easier to also understand multiple regression, which is a little bit more um, complicated conceptually. The great thing about regression is it's essentially just glorified slope intercept. So hopefully you remember learning about the slope intercept equation when you were in high school, um, college, or wherever you might have encountered it. And if you can think through what a slope intercept equation is doing, you can think through what regression is doing. So um, one other thing to note before we get into this is that regression can take interval dependent variables and independent variables. So you remember up until this point, all of our independent variables have been um, nominal, or at most they could be ordinal, in which you're able to separate them into different groups. So the, the independent variables for the t-test, for ANOVA, for whatever, you're always comparing groups. Are these groups different from each other? However, for regression, you can actually use an independent variable that's on a scale that's interval, right? Because again, you're looking at correlations. So this allows you to sort of say, oh, as this goes up, so does the other one, um, where ANOVA only can compare different groups. So here's the uh, slope-intercept equation you might be familiar with, y equals mx plus b. If it's been a little while since you've seen this equation, don't worry, I'm going to break it all down here for you, make it all clear, and make sure that you understand it. Um, but um, initially here, I just want to introduce it to you and show you how regression maps onto the slope-intercept equation. So... This is a very simple um, slope-intercept equation above, and this is a very simple regression equation below, which is one independent variable. Um, and you'll notice that the equation has the exact same structure. So in the regression equation, x1 there is the individual score on the variable 1, right? It's your shoe size or your foot size or whatever. Um, the b1 is what's referred to as the regression coefficient. And you'll notice it's playing the same role in this equation as m is playing in the slope-intercept equation. That is, your regression coefficient can be thought of as a slope. And we'll go into what that means here in just a second. You'll see that b0 there is playing the exact same role as b plays in the slope-intercept equation. And what that role is, is the, the y-intercept of the variable. Um, again, we're going to go into this a little bit more, um, but basically what you need to know here is the B0, the beta 0, is the value that your, your um, predicted variable is going to take when your score is 0 on the measured variable. So if x1 equals 0, you'll notice the, that that B1, x1 term would multiply out to 0, and x predicted would equal beta 0. Um, and lastly, what you see here taking the place of y is x predicted. Now, it doesn't necessarily have to be a prediction, but that's usually the easiest way to at least think about this as you're learning about regression. So you can think of x as the prediction for some score on this one variable x, given your score on this other variable x1, right? So if I know your foot size, I can make a pretty good prediction about what your shoe size is going to be. All right, so let's break this down a little bit more and just make sure all these components of the equation are nice and intuitive. Um, first, let's go into slope. So slope, just like correlation, measures how one variable changes with another, right? And if you only have a single term in your regression equation, this is just the correlation. Um, depending on how you standardize it and sort of how you do things, oftentimes the beta coefficient just is your correlation. So let's walk through this here. So here's a line. It's got a slope, right? Obviously, you can see this. If you go, say, up 2 on your x variable, so x increases by 2, your foot size, say, increases by 2, you're going to go up 1 on your y variable. So, say, your shoe size increases by one full size, right? All that the slope is doing is creating a ratio out of these, right? You may remember, again, from high school or wherever you took this, that slope's just equal to rise over run. So, in this case, it's 1 half. So, given that Every time your foot size goes up, say, you know, two centimeters, your shoe size goes up one full shoe size, the relation between those two is a half, right? As you go up two units in one, you're going to go up one in the other, which is half of the amount that you went up in the first variable. So hopefully this gives you a decent intuition for slope. Um, 
The next important term here in this equation is the intercept, or what you may have learned of as the y-intercept, right? The intercept is just the value of our predicted variable when the value of our predictor variable is zero, right? So if you look at the equation here, this should be really apparent. X predicted, our prediction on your measurement on variable one, say your shoe size, or your, your, on our predicted variable, say your shoe size, is equal to our regression coefficient, beta one, times your score on the other variable, say your foot size, right, on variable one, plus the slope intercept, beta, beta naught. Um, now notice, if your, your foot size is zero, right, so you get a score of zero on our measured variable, that's just going to make that term drop out of the equation, right? Anything times zero is zero, and you're left with our predicted score on our predicted variable is just equal to that intercept term, the beta sub zero. Um, so in terms of the, the, the logic of regression, let's go through this a little bit. Again, we're just sort of working our way through the slope-intercept equation, um, but I want you to have a sort of basic intuition of what you're doing. So why are we using slope-intercept, right? And why are we talking about predicting a variable? When oftentimes what you're doing with regression, you're not trying to predict anything, you're trying to see sort of what the difference is, right? Um, so imagine that you had no information about, um, say, an individual, right? And all that you knew was the mean for the population that they came from. So let's say you want to make a guess about my shoe size, but you know nothing about how tall I am, how big my feet are, or anything like that, your best guess, where you're going to have the most accuracy, is just guessing the mean of the population. If the mean shoe size of the population is, say, 9.5, you should guess 9.5, because no other value is going to get you closer, on average, to what the real values are going to be. Or another way of thinking about it is, if you made a guess for everyone, there's no other value that you could pick that's going to minimize the amount of error that you're going to make in your guesses. Um, so clearly the mean is going to be your best guess for any random score if you don't have any better information to go on. You should just guess the mean. Now notice, if you're guessing the mean for everybody, essentially you're left with a straight line, right? You're just guessing the same value. No matter what the value is of your, you know, any, any other information that you have, you're just going to guess the mean, because if you don't know how the information relates, your best guess is still the mean, right? However, if two variables are related in some way, you can use one to predict the value of the other one and get a better prediction than the mean, right? So again, this should be obvious with this sort of toy example of foot size and shoe size. You know that those two variables are related. Again, you wouldn't need a regression model to know that, but we often don't know that when we're doing research. So knowing that the two are related, however, allows you to get traction on guessing the shoe size more accurately than if you just guessed the mean, right? So essentially, remember, if we knew nothing about how the two variables related, we'd be stuck having to guess the mean. But if we know, for example, that as one increases, the other one increases, then we're allowed to make a better and more accurate guess, right? So... One way of thinking about this is if you, have two, or if you have two levels of a categorical variable. Say, on average, males have a different shoe size than the average shoe size for females, right? So in this situation, if all that you knew was the gender of the individual for which you had to make the guess, you would want to calibrate it accordingly, right? You would want to make a different guess for males than you made for females, right? So in this case, you can see the slope starting to emerge. Um, and basically what regression allows you to do is use the relationship between some variable that you can measure and some other variable that you're not sure of the value of and predict that using the slope-intercept equation. 